For years, the FBI has maintained a notorious list known as the Most Wanted for those who have committed heinous crimes and have managed to evade capture. Among the ranks of this infamous list, there exists a select group of individuals who have continuously evaded justice. These enigmatic figures, labeled as the FBI's Most Wanted Men, have become the subjects of countless investigations and international manhunts. Their ability to remain hidden from the grasp of law enforcement have indeed left the public and authorities alike captivated by their mysterious disappearances. 1. Badresh Kumar Chetanbhai Patel Known as an Indian fugitive who took the life of his wife, Patel was born on May 15, 1990, in India's Viramgam, Gujarat. He got married to his wife Palak in 2015. They were inseparable and usually traveled together to visit relatives in the US. At that time, Patel was around 24 and Palak was 21. But why is Patel on the FBI's most wanted? Well, it only took Patel until April 12, 2015, to execute his heinous acts. That night, the couple was said to be working a night shift at a Dunkin' Donuts located in Hanover, Maryland. The place belongs to one of Patel's many relatives, whom they happened to be visiting. In the CCTV footage that was retrieved, Palak was seen around 9.30 p.m. working together with Patel in the kitchen, when suddenly, they both disappeared out of view behind some racks. A few moments later, Patel appears to be the only one who re-emerged. Palak, on the other hand, is nowhere to be seen. And as the footage continues, Patel is seen turning off an oven before quickly exiting the store. Later that night, customers started to troop in at Dunkin' Donuts, but grew worried when no one served them. And that's when a police officer approached them and noticed the distress on the customers' faces. He decided to check out the scene, during which Palak's body was discovered to have been beaten to death and stabbed several times with a large kitchen knife. The police believe the couple must have been in some heated argument about Palak wanting to return to India, while Patel was against the idea. Unfortunately, Patel must have thought this was a better option. After an hour, the investigators examined the surveillance camera, and it became clear who the real suspect was. But it wasn't going to be easy, since Patel had managed to disappear. Apparently, one hour was just what he needed to plan a clean escape. Further, investigations, however, showed that Patel had fled to his nearby apartment on foot. While there, he carried some personal belongings and boarded a cab to a hotel near Newark, New Jersey airport. Patel checked into the hotel and was repeatedly spotted on surveillance camera paying at the counter in cash. The taxi driver who had driven him to the airport was interrogated and claimed that Patel was very calm for someone who had just committed murder. At 10 a.m. the next day, April 13, 2015, Patel checked out of the hotel, took a shuttle to Newark Penn Station, and hasn't been seen since then. However, Patel could not have fled the country because his visa had already expired by the time he committed his crime. But till today, Patel remains on the FBI's most wanted list, with a reward of $250,000 available for any information that will lead to his capture. 2. Wilva Villegas Palomino Wilva is a Colombian national who speaks Spanish, has brown eyes and black hair, and weighs around 190 pounds. He is also somewhere between 5'7 and 5'9 in height, and goes by the name Carlos El Puerco, which is Spanish for Carlos the Hog, or you can refer to him as El Puerco. On February 12th, 2020, an arrest warrant was issued for Wilva in the U.S. District Court Southern District of Texas Houston Division. But what exactly was Wilver's crime? According to the FBI, he is wanted for narco-terrorism, international cocaine distribution, and distribution conspiracy. He and five others were involved in a 20-year conspiracy set to distribute cocaine from Colombia to the US. And the FBI had also stated that Wilver is a ranking member of the Transnational Criminal Organization and Foreign Terrorist Organization National Liberation Army, aka Ejercito de Liberación Nacional, or ELN for short. As described by U.S. Attorney Alamdar S. Hamdani for the Southern District of Texas, the ELN is a known terrorist organization, founded in 1962, that finances its deadly operations by trafficking dangerous drugs into Houston. Reportedly, having about 2,500 fighters, the paramilitary group was behind a 2019 car bombing outside a Bogota police academy that took the lives of 22 police cadets and left 89 people injured. And as expected, Wilver was allegedly involved in drug trafficking activities for the northeastern war front of the ELN in the Catatumbo region of Colombia and Venezuela. Subsequently, the money obtained from the drug trafficking enterprise was earlier stated to be used in funding their deadly operations. These operations include funding terrorist attacks, sabotage operations, buying political influence, and funding other activities that are set to subvert U.S. national security and law enforcement interests in the country and to destabilize government institutions generally. Wilver and his subordinate ELN Fronts and Crossroads are responsible for a good number of assignments 
including the collection of coca-based paste, overseeing the production of these coca-based pastes, and clandestine production in the laboratories in the Catatumbo region of Colombia and Venezuela. Wilver may have managed to avert the FBI for years. However, the U.S. Department of State is still offering a reward of up to $5 million for any information that will bring about Wilver Villegas Palomino's arrest and or conviction. Surprisingly, he is also a most wanted fugitive of the Colombian departments of Norte de Santander, with an additional reward of 50 million Colombian pesos for anyone who can give information on his whereabouts. 3. Alejandro Rosales Castillo Born on November 26, 1998 in Arizona, Castillo is an American fugitive wanted for the murder of Sandy Lee Lay in Charlotte, North Carolina. Castillo, who speaks fluent English and knows his Spanish well, worked at a Shomar's restaurant in Charlotte at 17. He was a co-worker with Sandy, 23. The two had reportedly dated briefly, and during that short period, Sandy lent Castillo some money, which was never paid back. The two also had another co-worker named Ahmia Fiesta, 19, who became Castillo's new girlfriend after he had broken up with Sandy. On August 9, 2016, Castillo sent Sandy a text saying he wanted to pay back the money he owed her. She agreed to meet up with him at a quick trip on Eastway Drive in Charlotte. After meeting with Sandy, Fiesta came to pick Castillo up in her red Dodge Caliber, and they both left for a meeting. But Sandy, on the other hand, was last seen alive at the quick trip where she and Castillo met. According to the investigation reports, Castillo had forced Sandy to withdraw all her money from the bank with a gun instead of repaying her the amount he owed. Sandy's uncle, during his interrogation, stated that Sandy's bank statement showed that she withdrew the sum of $1,000 from an ATM, leaving her penniless. Reports also showed that Castillo drove her to a wooded area where he delivered a headshot, killing her. Her body was dumped in a ravine. And Castillo fled with his new girlfriend. Both of them were seen driving from North Carolina to Phoenix, Arizona in Sandy's car. The car was abandoned at a bus shelter and eventually found on August 15th. Castillo and Fiesta, on the other hand, were caught on surveillance, making their way to Nogales, where they crossed the border into Mexico. Fiesta turned herself in to the authorities on October 20th, 2016, in Aguascalientes, Mexico. She got in touch with her mother and was collected at the airport by the U.S. authorities. She was deported to the U.S. and later arrested near Houston, Texas. She faced charges of being an accessory to felony murder and stealing a motor vehicle. The bond amounts were $25,000 for the motor vehicle theft and $100,000 for the charge of being an accessory. Eventually, she was moved to Mecklenburg County Jail, where she managed to pay the bond and was released on January 18, 2017. Castillo, however, has not been seen since. It is believed that Castillo is still hiding in Mexico, somewhere in Aguascalientes. According to Fiesta, they had both been staying with Castillo's cousins in Aguascalientes. But during their two months of staying there, Castillo suddenly disappeared and went missing yet again. On February 10th, 2017, Castillo faced charges of first-degree murder and unlawfully fleeing to evade prosecution. But Castillo is still on the run and has found his way into the FBI's most wanted list. 4. Donald Eugene Fields II Fields is a 58-year-old man with brown hair and hazel eyes. His height ranges from 6'0 to 6'4, and he weighs about 235 pounds. Fields is a white male with multiple scars on his chest, left calf, both legs, groin region, and both knees. He was reportedly a tree trimmer, who also worked as a resale shop owner, and he used to be an independent car dealer as well. On May 25, 2023, Donald Eugene Fields II was added to the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. He is wanted for the alleged sex trafficking of at least one child in Missouri, somewhere between 2013 and 2017. His federal arrest warrant was issued on December 8, 2022, in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Missouri after the charges were pressed against him. According to the federal investigators, Fields may also go by other aliases like Don Fields, Donald Eugene Fields Jr., and Eugene Fields. He has allegedly demonstrated a pattern where he would take advantage of minor females under the age of 18 by gaining their trust, easily via manipulations. These minors were apparently placed in his care, but Fields clearly misused the power he was given and betrayed the little trust they had in him by using their resources to take advantage of them. A reward of $250,000 has been set out by the FBI for information that will lead to Fields' arrest. The amount reflects the FBI's decision in May 2023 to increase the rate from $100,000 to the current price in order to facilitate and speed up the capturing of the criminals found on their wanted fugitive list. From recent investigations, Fields might be evading capture by seeking refuge alongside Jennifer Isgriggs, a 30-year-old individual who potentially shares a romantic affiliation with him. Jennifer Isgriggs is also subject to an outstanding felony warrant 
pertaining to her failure to meet her obligations in paying child support. Both individuals have become the focus of investigation as law enforcement agencies endeavor to locate and apprehend them in connection with their respective legal matters. Fields was last known to live in Missouri, where he has family members and connections in Kentucky. He is known to enjoy going to casinos and has been to Florida in the past. 5. Arnoldo Jimenez Arnoldo Jimenez is another American fugitive who was added to the FBI's most wanted list in 2019. Born on February 19, 1982, Arnoldo is wanted for the murder of his wife, Estrella Carrera, on May 2012, a day after their wedding. Arnoldo and his wife Estrella were married on May 11, 2012, at Chicago City Hall. Carrera already had a child from her previous relationship, one nine-year-old daughter, and she also had a two-year-old son with Arnoldo. After the wedding ceremony, they had dinner with family and friends before heading to a nightclub. The couple left the nightclub around 4 a.m. on May 12th. The authorities believed that when the couple left the nightclub on their way back home, they must have gotten into a deep argument, during which Arnoldo fatally stabbed his wife multiple times in his car. Afterwards, he dragged her body into her apartment in Burbank, Illinois, where he dumped the body in a bathtub. This conclusion was drawn due to the fact that Carrera still had on her silver dress from the wedding. Poor Carrera was supposed to pick her kids up from family members on May 12th, but she was a no-show, and that was when they immediately reported her missing to the police. On the afternoon of May 13th, Carrera's body was discovered and retrieved from the bathtub. The investigators confirmed that there were no signs of forced entry, and Arnoldo had also disappeared, as his car was nowhere to be found. Three days after this unfortunate event, Arnoldo faced charges of first-degree murder and a state warrant was issued for his apprehension. Arnoldo was also charged with unlawfully fleeing to evade prosecution on May 17th. The police immediately started to track him down and discovered that he had used his cell phone in Chicago, then in southern Illinois. It was also used in Memphis, Tennessee, and Arkansas. On May 13th, his cell phone was traced from Houston and then to Hidalgo, Mexico, yet no signs of the user. In September 2012, a drug arrest was made on Arnoldo's brother Humberto by the police. When a search was conducted on Humberto's property, Arnoldo's car was found in his garage with blood inside the vehicle. This discovery was what led to the conclusion of Carrera's case about her being murdered in the car before being dragged out and into the bathtub inside her apartment. It is believed that Humberto dropped Arnoldo off in Mexico with his car. Authorities want to believe that Arnoldo could be hiding in Durango, Mexico, specifically in Santiago Papasquiaro, or he might be hiding in Reynosa, Tamaulipas, Mexico. Arnoldo was the 522nd fugitive to make the FBI's most wanted fugitive list, and as per the reward money, information leading to Arnoldo's capture will attract a whooping sum of $250,000. 6. Omar Alexander Cardenas Born on March 23, 1995, Omar Alexander Cardenas was an American fugitive who is currently on the run from the police. Cardenas is believed to be a member of a gang called the Pier Street Gang in Los Angeles. Cardenas may also be known by the alias Dollar. The FBI added him to a list of the 10 most wanted fugitives in the country on July 20, 2022. This was done because he was suspected of committing a heinous crime and running away to avoid getting caught and currently, everyone thinks he may have gone to Mexico to hide. But why exactly is Cardenas on the run, and what crime did he commit? In August 2019, Cardenas was thought to have shot and killed a man named Jabali Dumas, a 46-year-old man. The shooting happened outside a barbershop in a neighborhood called Silmar in Los Angeles. The head of the Los Angeles Police Department, Michael Moore, said that Cardenas shot Dumas nine times from about 30 feet away, hitting him in the head. Unfortunately, Dumas died at the scene. After the shooting, Cardenas drove away in his car. Sadly, there's no information as to whether Cardenas and Dumas knew each other before the shooting. In April 2020, Cardenas was officially charged with the murder. In September 2021, Cardenas was charged with another crime, unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. This means that he is being accused of running away to avoid being arrested and punished for the crimes he is suspected of committing. The FBI has said that Cardenas might have gone to Mexico, but he could also still be in Southern California, where he has family and friends. They have even suggested that he might be working as a construction worker. The FBI usually offers a reward to any brave citizen who can provide information that leads to the capture of a fugitive on their list, and in this case, they are offering a reward of up to $250,000 for information about Cardenas. 7. Alexis Flores If you thought you've seen worse, 
then you'd also want to update your list of who the absolute worst of them all truly is. Alexis Flores, born on July 18, 1975, is a Honduran fugitive wanted by the FBI for the abduction, exploitation, and extermination of five-year-old Iriana de Jesus in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in 2000. Flores has actually been known to use dates of birth ranging from 1975 to 1982, but his actual date of birth is 1975. He can be easily identified by the large surgical scar on his neck, which he got during a hurricane in Honduras in 1998. In the summer of 2000, a homeless person who goes by the name Carlos was granted shelter and clothing. He also began working as a handyman thanks to Hunting Park, Philadelphia resident Jorge Contreras. After Carlos's appearance, little Irian went missing. Five days after Iriana was reported missing, her body was discovered in the basement of an empty apartment building that supposedly belonged to Carlos. Reports showed that she was exploited, strangled, and wrapped in a trash bag. A t-shirt with a clear political logo was also found drenched in Iriana's blood. During Contreras, Contreras's interrogation, he recognized the shirt and claimed it was one of the clothing he had lent to Carlos. Carlos, however, was nowhere to be found after the incident. He immediately became wanted for interrogation, and a drawing of him was profiled on America's Most Wanted. Sadly, the case went cold for years, and no one ever heard of Carlos again. Two years later, Flores was arrested for shoplifting in Arizona. The police had shown up at his place in response to a noise complaint. Flores had handed over a few fraudulent identity documents to the police and was immediately arrested for possession of a forgery device and felony. During his interrogation, Flores had a friendly demeanor and cooperated just fine with the police, but that wasn't fooling anyone as they had to search his apartment for further investigation. There was a lot of explicit content found spread across the floors. Flores was detained for 60 days and deported to Honduras after his release in 2005. But as fate may have it, a DNA sample taken from Flores was later added to the combined DNA index system and later found to match that of Carlos. In fact, Flores and Carlos were the same person. March 22, 2007 marked a significant event in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania when authorities issued a local arrest warrant against Flores. He faced charges of murder and several other serious crimes. On that very day, a federal arrest warrant was also issued in the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, accusing Flores of unlawfully fleeing to evade prosecution. 8. Yulan Adonai Archaga Carias Yulan is a Honduran fugitive, drug lord, and suspected head of the Honduran MS-13 gang. His name was added to the FBI's most wanted list on November 3, 2021. Yulan is wanted for dishonest and fraudulent business dealings, trafficking of narcotics and firearms offenses. He is believed to be orchestrating all the activities of the MS-13 gang and even providing them with the cash needed for their criminal activities. Yulan is also guilty of overseeing the murders of rival gang members. In 2015, Chaga Carayas was arrested and put in jail in Honduras. He was found guilty of crimes like money laundering and being part of an illegal group. On February 13, 2020, Carayas was allowed to leave prison temporarily for a court hearing in El Progreso, a city about 28 kilometers away from San Pedro Sula. Instead of being taken there by helicopter, which is the usual practice, he was transported in a van. There were very few security guards with him, and the military police didn't receive any notice beforehand, as is usually done for such an important prisoner. When they arrived at the courthouse in El Progreso, a group from the MS-13 gang broke in and helped Carayas escape amidst a hail of bullets. Acquired surveillance footage showed two groups of men dressed in military police. Uniforms arriving on the scene. The first group of men were seen escorting a man in cuffs using a false prisoner as a decoy, while the second group was escorting a man wearing a black tunic used to protect the identity of a witness or victim. But in this case, it was used to hide weapons and ammunition. In 2021, the US attorney for the Southern District of New York officially accused Archaga Carias of committing crimes related to illegal activities like organized crime, smuggling drugs, and using guns. After he was charged, Archaga Carias became one of the most wanted criminals in the FBI's list of top 10 fugitives. The FBI offered a reward of up to $100,000 to anyone who could give information that would lead to his arrest. Authorities believe that he is still in Honduras, where he has been hiding. In 2022, the FBI dedicated an episode of its podcast and YouTube series called Inside the FBI to talk about Archaga Carias and the notorious gang called MS-13, with which he is associated. On February 8, 2023, the US federal government intensified its efforts to apprehend Archaga Carias. The Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs, part of the US Department of State, made a significant move by offering a reward of $5 million through its Narcotics Rewards Program. Simultaneously, the Office of Foreign Assets Control
control, a division of the U.S. Department of the Treasury placed sanctions on Karayas. He was included on the specially designated nationals and blocked persons list in accordance with Executive Order 13581. 9. Gregorian Bivolaru Gregorian Bivolaru is a fugitive yoga guru who tried to sleep with 1,000 virgins so he could reach a higher spiritual level. He is a controversial figure who has been involved in various activities that have garnered significant attention and controversy. Born on March 12, 1952, in Romania, he gained prominence as the founder and former spiritual leader of the Movement for Spiritual Integration into the Absolute, aka Misa, an organization that combines elements of yoga and spirituality. Bivolaru's teachings and practices within Misa have been the subject of both adoration and criticism. Supporters view him as a spiritual leader and a source of inspiration, while critics argue that he has manipulated and exploited his followers. His organization has been accused of operating as a cult, exerting control over its members, and engaging in questionable practices. One of the most significant events in Bivolaru's life occurred in 2004 when he fled Romania after being charged with sexual exploitation of minors. The charges stemmed from allegations of improper activities within Misa, including allegations of sexual abuse involving minors. Following his departure from Romania, Bivolaru was subsequently arrested in France. However, he managed to escape custody and has been a fugitive since then. The case against Bivolaru gained international attention, with Interpol issuing a red notice, which is an international arrest warrant seeking his capture. The red notice highlighted the charges of sexual exploitation of minors, human trafficking, and leading an organized criminal group. Authorities across different countries have made efforts to locate and apprehend him, but Bivolaru has managed to remain hidden, with his current whereabouts unknown. The circumstances surrounding Bivolaru's case have generated extensive debates and controversies. Supporters argue that he is a victim of religious persecution and that the charges against him are politically motivated. They maintain that his teachings and practices within Misa are genuine and have positively impacted their lives. On the other hand, critics and some former members of Misa contend that Bivolaru has engaged in manipulative and exploitative behavior particularly with vulnerable individuals. They argue that the organization has operated as a cult, employing mind control techniques and creating a harmful environment for its members. 10. Eugene Palmer. Eugene K. Palmer, born on April 4, 1939, is an American fugitive who is wanted for the suspected murder of his daughter-in-law, Tammy Palmer, on September 24, 2012. The FBI added him to its prestigious 10 Most Wanted list on May 29, 2019, making him the 523rd fugitive to be included on that list. Eugene Palmer's son, John Palmer, was happily married to Tammy Palmer, and they resided with their two children, at a property belonging to Eugene in Stony Point, New York. Eugene himself lived in a neighboring house. As time passed, John and Tammy's relationship began to deteriorate, leading them to seek romantic involvement with other people. Tammy took legal action by filing a restraining order against John, which greatly angered Eugene. Moreover, Tammy threatened to initiate divorce proceedings and pursue legal action to claim ownership of the land owned by Eugene. These events sparked a bitter feud between Eugene and Tammy, escalating to a heated confrontation that occurred a few days prior to Tammy's tragic murder. On September 24, 2012, after accompanying her two children to the school bus, Tammy began her return home. Little did she know that Eugene Palmer, allegedly hiding in the nearby woods, had planned to ambush her. As Tammy approached her residence, Palmer reportedly started shooting at her with a shotgun from a distance. The initial shot struck her arm, followed by a missed shot. Tragically, the third shot, fired at close range, hit her chest and proved to be fatal. Following the shooting, Palmer swiftly fled the scene in a green Dodge Ram pickup truck. Later on, authorities discovered the abandoned vehicle outside Harriman State Park in Rockland County. It appeared that Palmer abandoned the truck and disappeared into the park on foot. Law enforcement initiated a search with the aid of tracking dogs, which led them to a campground in the wooded area. Despite multiple search efforts, no further sign or trace of Palmer has been uncovered since. In September 2014, a judge from the New York Supreme Court ruled in favor of Tammy's children, awarding them two $2.15 million, equivalent to $2.66 million in 2022. This amount was determined to be the estimated value of Palmer's entire estate. The judge made this decision based on the evidence presented, concluding that Palmer was responsible for Tammy's death. On June 10, 2013, a federal arrest warrant was issued for Eugene Palmer. Despite the warrant and ongoing efforts to locate him, no definitive information or sightings of Palmer have been reported. Some family members have expressed the belief that he may have died in the park. However, law enforcement officials from the Haverstraw Police Department have stated that nobody was ever discovered, despite multiple extensive searches conducted in the area. The fate and whereabouts of Eugene Palmer remain unknown. Palmer relies on medications to manage his heart condition and diabetes. He is an outdoorsman with extensive experience 
experience in hunting, fishing, and hiking. Additionally, Palmer has a keen interest in cars and is described as an enthusiast. It is also worth noting that he has a deformed left thumb. Authorities suspect that he might be hiding either in Florida or upstate New York, as he has relatives in those areas. Acting on a tip, the FBI conducted a search at the residence of one of Palmer's granddaughters in Warwick, New York on August 17, 2021. However, the search yielded no results or evidence related to Palmer's whereabouts. On July 20, 2022, Palmer was removed from the FBI 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list as it was determined that he no longer met the criteria for inclusion. This decision led to his replacement by Omar Alexander Cardenas. Nonetheless, it is important to note that Palmer remains a wanted fugitive and efforts to locate him continue. 11. Robert William Fisher Robert William Fisher, an American fugitive, is wanted for the alleged murder of his family and the subsequent explosion of their house in Scottsdale, Arizona, on April 10, 2001. In his early life, Fisher's parents divorced when he was 15, leading him and his siblings to live with their father in Arizona. The divorce had a significant impact on him, and he harbored bitterness about it. Fisher attempted to become a Navy SEAL but was unsuccessful, which led to him pursuing a career in the medical field as a surgical catheter technician and respiratory therapist. Fisher was born on April 13, 1961, in Brooklyn, New York City. He got married to Mary Cooper in 1987, and they had two adorable little kids, Bobby and Brittany. Fisher's parents' divorce when he was 15 had a lasting impact on him, contributing to the difficulties he faced in his own family life. Fisher had a troubled family life, displaying cruel and controlling behavior towards his wife and children. The incident occurred after his wife, Mary, had expressed her intention to divorce him. On the day of the incident, the family's home exploded, resulting in the deaths of Fisher's wife and two kids. Their throats had been slit, and Mary was reportedly shot in the back of her head. Fisher, on the other hand, was missing along with Mary's car, making him the prime suspect in the killings. Ten days later, the car was discovered in a forest near Young, Arizona. Fisher's fate remains unknown, although some speculate that he may have died in the forest where his car was found. Fisher was named the 475th fugitive on the FBI's 10 most wanted list on June 29, 2002. However, on November 3, 2021, he was removed from the list. Despite this, Fisher remains a wanted fugitive. The investigation into the triple homicide and arson revealed that Fisher withdrew money from an ATM before the incident, using his wife's car. The house exploded the following morning, with the gas line deliberately tampered with. It is believed that Fisher orchestrated the explosion to conceal evidence and possibly create the impression that he had died. Despite extensive efforts to locate Fisher, including his inclusion on most wanted lists and various reported sightings, he has evaded capture. Speculation about his fate includes theories of suicide, death in the wilderness, or starting a new life under an assumed identity. However, authorities continue to search for this wanted fugitive. Well, all interesting videos must come to an end, but there's more where that came from. Just click on one of the cards on the screen to enjoy more videos.